Yeah. Right. 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 yeah. So, Coach, just just work, working with Coach DeVries, his system, those type of things, what, what's what's this like? I mean, some are new in terms of coaches. Some yeah. aren't. So, you know, explain what he does and what he does well. Oh, uh, well, I would say he's incredibly detailed. Uh, he does a really good job of, of focusing on what winning looks like. Obviously, he's been around that a lot. Um, he's, I don't think he's ever witnessed a, a losing season in his coaching career. So he's, he's been around winning. And there is, it does look like winning when you're around. And you, when you, I've been around losing, too, through my career. And you feel losing. And he focuses in on what helps guys win, what those details are offensively and defensively. And he hits on it every single day. He is a stickler for not only the details, but the guy's passion. I think that's the one thing that I've learned the most from him in, in my six, seven months of being here is he is in, he's incredibly focused on the passion and energy that our guys bring to every single day. Um, and he does a really good job of not only just co harping on that, because it can become a little bit um, white noise if you're just saying you got to play more passionate, we're play more passionate. But he figures out different ways to push guys' buttons depending on who that is, and it's a lot harder nowadays. Like it's back in the day, you used to know a guy and you used to be able to coach them in a certain way, and you recruited them for two or three years, and then you'd coached them for a year most times before they played. Now, you get six, seven months with them, and you got to learn them quickly. And I think he's uh, he's done from what I've seen so far. He's done a really good job of doing that thus far. And now we get into when adversity hits, who are we? And I think uh, from the guys that I've been blessed enough to be around, uh, he's done that at, at the highest level, better than I've seen. Great counter for Bloom, I didn't follow Brian's instructions. But to follow up with that a little bit, you said you can tell when you're on the staff sometimes the difference of winning it and losing. Mm -hmm. Explain what is the difference? What can you feel? Um, a lot of times it, it's uh, are you willing to – who, who are you when adversity hits? Everybody's fine when it's 70 and sunny, right? Like, it's everybody can coach that, but adversity is going to come. And who are you when that adversity comes and when it hits? So whether that be a, a, a run in practice, whether that be somebody's sick, somebody gets hurt, somebody has some sort of issue. Um, and we've had different things throughout our offseason here that have hit. And one of those might have been he has consistently responded in a way of focusing in on what is the most important thing. And to me, it's – helping them be men of character, right? So like when it hits, it's not focusing on, you know, just a possession or a win or a loss of, but who are you when, when that comes? Because you're either going to be a man, man of character or you're going to run and you're going to point the finger towards everybody else. So he does a really good job of every single day making sure that our guys are focusing on the right thing. We, team, us. And that's, that's what he talks about consistently. to a new program with a new group of coaches, you know, after you had obviously a really good base of experience at your previous couple of stops. Specific things that you focus on that you try to either learn first or get comfortable with first? Uh, honestly, as an assistant, it's all about what's most important to the head coach because everybody's a little bit different. Uh, different things are more, more important to Coach Crean, who I played for in Indiana, to Coach Alford, who I coached with for 11 years, to Coach DeVries. So there are things that are important to him, and what's important to him has to be the most important thing to each and every one of the people on his staff because obviously that's what's going to lead to winning. He's seen winning a lot, and he we're only going to win in his way if we're all trying to do it our own ways or what we've seen or – now he does. I will say he does a really good job of when we meet, when we all come together. He wants to hear what other people have done. He wants to hear what, what other people's point of views are because he's. He, I think, like I said, he has such a good pulse for winning. He's not afraid to hear somebody else's voice, and he pulls in of oh, I really, I really like that, and that can fit into what we do. And he does that consistently and asks our opinion um, every single day, uh, which not all guys do. There's there's some people who are a little more dictatorship. Uh, this is the way that we do it. We're going to do it this way every day. He does a good job of communicating communicating not only with his assistants, but with his players and, and taking in what, what each and every individual says and then using that to help us move in the right direction towards winning. One or two different things here that you weren't you know, quite at that importance level of previous stops? Yeah, I, I mean, I would say his, his, uh, his focus in on especially offensive detail, I haven't seen that during my time. Coach Crean was a, a, a ton of set type of guy where he ran a lot of different action. Coach Alford was a little bit more of the motion-based. 
Coach DeVries does both. He does a really good job of kind of mixing it. He has sets that will get to what we need to get to for a certain player to get shots or whatever that might be. But then he also does an unbelievable job of just teaching the flow of the game, which I think through hopefully Charleston you guys get to see a little bit, but you'll see as we go along the season is he teaches guys how to play, not just where to be on a certain call. Right? And that's the most important thing because, like, same thing as in life where we talked about, like, adversity is going to hit during a game. There's going to be, be a team that pressures us, and I'm doing a scout now, and the team one team that we're going to play soon is going to pressure us like crazy. How do we handle that? How are we able to react in those situations? Because you, the whole offseason is about drilling in on their habits and their details because you're not going to rise to the occasion. You're going to fall to the level of what you trained at every single day, and he does a really good job of training that every single day, what that looks like no matter what we see. Adjusting to Morgantown, and I mean, it's you've been a little of everywhere, I, yeah. I understand. So, yeah. how are you adjusting? Uh, it feels like home to me, honestly. Like, I, LA was a great experience. Newly married, no kids, um, living in a two-bedroom apartment for way too much money. But it's it, now I get back a little bit closer to. Um, I, really, I was I was raised in Indiana, so this feels a lot like Indiana. Morgantown feels a lot like Bloomington. Um, a, a cool college town, an hour south of a major city, and it, the people have been unbelievably kind, and they embrace us. And both my my two little boys are in school here. I got a six and three year old, and my wife's done an unbelievable job of making this home right away. I think that's the the most important thing in coaching is having a good wife, and I do. I'm blessed that way. So I've loved it so far. The people have been awesome, and we're looking forward to uh, building this thing up. Uh, Justin Jackson with the Dominion Post. Uh, welcome to Morgantown. Thank you. I uh, the one thing that is, you know with with the portal where yeah. I guess this is what we're in now. I guess I've seen a lot of examples where bringing in a bunch of new faces onto one roster have never played together. I've seen that go bad. Mm -hmm. What's what's the secret to Coach DeVries making it go well? I guess what what, what have you seen there with because, uh, you know, he's in that situation, you know, yeah. 13 new guys, I guess, basically. So. No doubt. Um, well, starting the off season, I'll tell you, um, my first two months of coaching with him, my probably my biggest frustration with him was, like, I'd, I'd find a player that I wanted to, to recruit, and we would do our background checks, and if there was any type of flag, he was, he was no. I, he had a really good pulse of, I know what my locker room looks like. I, I know who I want to coach. I know who I want to go to battle and war with every single day. And then if it doesn't look like that, then it doesn't fit who I am. And and so I, I, I would say it was a frustration because it was like, well, that's a that's a great recruit that averaged X and sure. rebounds points, whatever. But it also was refreshing. You, it's it's a lot easier to work for somebody who knows what they want and and he knows exactly what he who he wants to coach and who he wants to go to war with in that locker room. And that's one thing that he does probably better than I've ever been around is. He he brings the group together to hey we're we're gonna go out and we're gonna battle together. Every single time is gonna be a different type of challenge, but it's gonna be about us consistently. It doesn't mean we're gonna win every single night. Even when we lose, we're gonna learn a lot from that. So he does a really good job of pulling from every single day of what was good, what was bad, and learning from it. So culture, character, kind of outweigh stats, recruiting rankings? Like, I would definitely say yeah. so. Yeah, and obviously stats and recruiting rankings are, right? I would say stats are incredibly um, important because uh, recruiting rankings, I would say that where they come into play is there's probably people that he trusts, that he has a good relation with, that he trusts their eye because you can't see all million recruits that are in whatever, however many kids are in the portal, 1,000. Like We didn't see all 1,000 of those kids live, but I mean, the, the coaching profession is this. So we, we, we know a trusted scout who saw that kid live and was around that kid as he grew up and, or a coach who was around him as he grew up that we can call that we trust. And Because there's a lot about character. Like I've had times in my, especially in Nevada, um, even a little bit at UCLA, where we brought a kid in who, a guy that I didn't know very well, may have said all the right things about him, but then later on I found out there was somebody else I should have been talking to that would have told me, hey, when adversity hits, he might not be the, one, the guy that you want in the locker room. And so Coach does a really good job of finding the right people around them, the, the voices that he can trust to kind of wade through the noise. There's a lot of noise, so, okay. yeah, okay. yeah. You uh, obviously coach in some high-level conferences. What's the perception of the Big 12? and? Uh, the new Big 12 with some of the old Pac-12 members. What's, yeah. How difficult is this going to be? 
pretty brutal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's tough. There's just no off nights. I think that's the biggest difference between the Big 12 and any other league. It's just, you know, I I won't go through it because I don't want to disrespect any programs. But everywhere that I've been, you had nights where. I guess there were games that you really should win, right? Like, it's just going to be really hard here to find those nights. It's every single time. And even if you go play number one in the country and follow it up with a home game against number five, you still got to go beat number 24. And a lot of times it's on the road. So that's that's hard. And there's not many leagues like that. I I was blessed enough to be in the Big Ten when it was high level. I mean, the year my uh, GA year there, we were number one in the country a lot of the year. Michigan ended up going to the Final Four. Ohio State was top ten all year. Michigan State was the top ten all year. But there was a bottom. Like, if you go back and study it, there was six through – I don't even remember how many teams we had then. I think it was closer to 12. Like, so six through 12 were teams that we did beat and we should have beat. And then you just had to really focus on winning versus the top six. It's not like that here because six through however many teams we have now, 27. Um, you you got you to compete every single night and come with that. And a lot of that is what we're talking about is responding to adversity because it's you're going to have a hard game or you don't play well or the other team just hits every single shot and they play great. Um, and their home crowd's rocking and then now you got to come home and you got to beat a really, really good team and respond after things didn't go your way. Who are you when that, when that, that, that level of adversity hits? Uh, Cody Nesker, uh, West Virginia Sports Now. When you're, when you're doing something like that, you know, on the road, two days later back here, three days after that back on the road, how do guy, how do you find time for the guys to, you know, relax? Yeah. You know, because they, you know, so they don't burn out in January. It's hard. It's a grind. It really is. Yeah. It's, um, you know, I, obviously I haven't been around Tim during for for that part of the season yet, so we'll see how he handles all that. But it's I, a lot of times it's our guys connecting. Like I, I'll say as as a guy. Who, I was blessed enough to go through a lot of adversity in Indiana. Like when I was there, my freshman and sophomore year, we were really bad. Probably one some of the worst Indiana teams ever. Now it was Coach Crean coming in and taking over a whole new program, and so it was expected. The expectations weren't there, but it's still really hard when you're wearing those candy stripes and you're not winning games. The heat gets turned up pretty quick, and I will say those guys are some of my best friends. They were in my wedding. They I still talk to them today. So it's just those guys when adversity hits, whether it's good or bad or whatever it looks like, how are they connecting? And so far from our trip through Italy and through our summers, coaches do a really good job of making sure that they have those opportunities where they're around each other a lot to where they can get connected. Because like we said, it's, it's transfer portal. A lot of these kids, sometimes like I was blessed enough to play with guys for four years. I, I don't know that there's a guy in this roster who's going to play with a player for four years. Like that's kind of mind blowing, but it just is what it is. It's it's a part of the the culture that we're in, the the time that we're in, the, the how, how the the industry has changed. So it's got to look differently, and we have to adjust as coaches. Greg here with West Virginia Metro News. Uh, how does your role here maybe compare to previous stuff, specifically defensively, where you had a lot of involvement at the bottom? Yeah, so I, uh, Coach has, has actually moved me over to the offensive side of the ball to kind of kind of talk talk with him there. So that's a lot of what I did at UCLA um, when, when I was with Coach. Left after I left Indiana, pretty much the six years out of UCLA, I was on the offensive side. And then at at, at um, Nevada, Coach Craig Neal was a really really good offensive mind. So Coach Offer had him on that side, so he put me in charge of the defense. And I will say it's, it helped me grow a ton. Now offensively, I have a whole different point of view because I got to witness every single game, every single prep, I was focused on the defense. And then I really learned what's hard to guard. And when I watched film, I would say, man, I'm really worried about how we're going to guard this. Well, now I can flip that. And on the offensive side, I can watch a team and say, this is what's going to be hard for them to guard because they're switching four ways or they're trying to trap ball screens or they're running the coverages that I ran last year. I'm, I know what they're going to struggle with because I went through that in practice. I had to cover that in scout or we didn't guard that well and got lit up on it. So it's it's helped me to be able to grow as an assistant. I'm thankful for him for being able to be on on, on that side to, to learn from him because uh, he does an incredible job of it. Bob Hurtsville from uh, Fairmont Clark uh, How... How has it affected you? You've, you've worked at places with tradition like crazy. I mean, Indiana, UCLA, mm -hmm. you deal with Jerry West, went to school. How, how has that affected you being involved in those things? And, 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 and what do they mean to the players that come in? Man, it's a blessing. I, and it, I think I would say it's a little bit of uh, it's I would, burdens, not, not the right word, but it does put a lot of. Uh, 
weight on your shoulders of helping them understand the history that they're walking out there with. Like the, the words on the front of your chest mean a lot. Like I obviously in Indiana, like it meant a lot to me being an Indiana kid, being able to put those cane stripes on and wear Indiana, right? At UCLA, those kids understood that. Here it's, it, it, those West Virginia means a lot. And so again, I keep going back to it, but coaches are really a good job of getting our guys to help them slowly understand that. I will say nowadays with TikTok and Twitter and social media, kids don't learn something the first time you tell them. Like it has to be over time and time and time and time so that they feel the weight of the importance. And I think the thankfully they've been able to see it through this off season of all the different sports that are going on now, how much West Virginia cares. Like people who are from here are from here. As somebody who's been in California and Nevada, nothing against those two places. I loved both of them for different reasons, but that's a very transient area. Most people from California aren't from California. And when I'd ask you, where are you from? They'd say, 10 different states where people who are from West Virginia are from West Virginia and they loved it here and they stayed here and this is the the flagship and so it means a lot to wear those, those words in the front of your chest and it's just it's interesting Lee that uh, you were Cal West Virginia cut right. to the final and lost to Cal right. by a point in uh, <laughs> yeah. the semifinal <laughs> very true <laughs> so it's just trying to help them understand that on, on a daily basis so it's it, it means a lot to them and I think the cool part has been I haven't been around a place that has so many former players come back. It's it's incredible. Like I've I've probably met anywhere from 50 to 75 former players here in West Virginia, and it was cool that Coach Beeline's team got to come back, so we got to meet that entire team outside, I think, one individual who didn't come back. So they get to see the former players, hear it from them. Like, this is what it meant for me to play here, and this is what I've seen now afterwards and what it's how it's helped me further my my career, my life, my, my family. So they've they've seen it. They've seen how much it means to them, and so they, they get to feel that weight as they go step onto that court. Have connections with UCLA at all? Or yeah, here and there. Yeah, a lot, some of our staff still there. I was just going to ask. I mean, obviously realignment is kind of yeah. a big story this year. What do they think about being in, in the Big Ten? And <laughs> it depends you know, on who you ask. Yeah, I think, you know, going two thousand miles to play a conference. I don't think game. they're very excited about it. Like even <laughs> if you look at. Uh, we did a study while we were there because we were, we were long story, but we were trying to fight our administration on how much travel we had to do. But it, like even Coach Wooden's record when he had to go out east wasn't very good because it's just it's, it's hard to go to the east coast and lose three hours and then fly back and they're doing a lot. Like it it'll be interesting. I, I, it's a uh, it's uncharted territories. Nobody's ever really done this, and you got two ACC schools on the Pacific coast, and then you got. And now a bunch of schools in the and that are supposed to easily be West Coast schools now in the Big Ten. So it'll be, I, I'm I'm interested to hear what they have to say after the season. Like right now they're all kind of we don't really know how it'll work. You're gonna play in, on New York on a Tuesday and then come back and play in L.A. on a Friday and they have to go play in w Wisconsin on a Monday. I just I, that that's gonna be hard. It's gonna be a balance. Corey, I'm Mike. I work for 24/7 Sports. Um, your time at Indiana started rough, right? Yes. UCLA probably had a rough too. Yeah, a little uh, bit. Um, not not because of you, but like yeah, those, yeah. Those, all this stuff talk about tradition. When yeah. that comes intense scrutiny too. Yes. Um, it ends up great for you as a player at Indiana, and maybe never got the chance to get it turned around at, at UCLA. But what under that microscope in this program, is to have expectations, and you know the noise can really make a difference mm -hmm. too. Um, I don't know how does that just change the right word, change a coach, change a player at that stage of his career. Um, so if I understand your question correctly, just just. <laughs> Hey, no, you're good. How to handle the expectations of it? Yeah, just imagine, like, like, did you know that part of Indiana basketball before you got there? And, like, you knew what UCLA was. Yeah. But, like, man, do they really have sharp teeth like that? Yeah. Because it was pretty good before that, too. It was. Yeah, yeah it's, it's hard. Like, it's all about what I've learned through, through – it's all about expectations. Um, and, unfortunately, I think, because a lot of times the outside can't fully understand, like, what we've talked about. When you're putting 13 new guys on a team – nobody can tell you what, what they're going to look like when adversity hits, right? So it's is, – is there coaching involved in that? Yes. But also there's a lot of parenting involved in that, how they are born and raised. And as coaches, we got to do a really good job of having that pulse. But there's going to be a little bit that's outside of your control. And I will say at UCLA, I learned a ton, and it was a lot of fun. Um, but that, that pressure is immense. I mean, we went to – Three straight Sweet 16s, uh, won a Pac-12 championship our, our first year, uh, and you know I, I think we, the year at we got 
the year we got fired was maybe the year after Lonzo Ball's team, and we were number one in the country a lot of the year. And and it's just it's a kind of a part of of what it is there. If you don't go to Final Fours at that school, you're gonna get let go pretty quickly. It's just the the weight of of being the UCLA coach, and we knew that going in. That wasn't. It, it's part of the blessing. Part of the part of the, the, the blessing is the burden, right? So it's same thing in Indiana. Like the pressure in Indiana is immense. And why is that? Because those fans love Indiana basketball, right? Like it's it's you want to complain about it of well be more realistic or be this or be that, but they they love it because they're that passionate about it. And that's if their support level is that, it's hard to argue it. Like if they're packing the house every night in Indiana and having seventeen thousand strong, they want they're supporting in that way. They want to be able to watch a team that that competes at that level every single night. Indiana's warm-up fans twice. Do you still have a pair? Did you manage to my, get away with a pair? I, I have them in my drawer in here. Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, Chester played at Illinois when I was in Indiana, so I've I've pulled him out a few times just to mess with him. Yeah. Anything else for Coach? Coach, thank you. Yeah.